Three, two, one. Broadcasting from warm, sunny Florida at the downtown Newport Ritchie Sand Peak Realty Studio, this is SP Real Simple with your host, Steve Lucar. All right. We're live. Not live, but we're recording. How we doing, Miss Betty? Knocking well, my headphones off. Much more focused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When was the last time we talked? That had to have been uh, maybe a year ago. It was maybe May, June, something like that. I don't know. It's been a while. Okay. What's changed since then? Anything new? I sold my condo. There you go. Good job. <laughs> Not moved out yet, but I've sold it. So you're like just hanging out in there, squatting? Well, it hasn't closed yet, so it's, oh. we're waiting to close first of March. Okay, that's better. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be squatters. Oh, uh, no, 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 I wouldn't do that. <laughs> if I was going to do that, I'd do it at my son's. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Where's he at? Holiday. He's on holiday. Yeah. Okay. Golf land. So he doesn't have, let you just move right in with him? They would. They would? Mm-hmm. And I said, no. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to? No. No. It's like the opposite when, you know, the kids move out and, you, you know, there's a good chance they're going to move back in at some point. Yeah, they knew better. <laughs> yeah? You didn't allow that? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Figure it out, guys. You're grown-ups. Figure it out. Yep. Yep. So, uh, what else is new? Not a whole lot, really. Just no. trying to find a place to live now. You're like, going to rent? Yes. Well, maybe. Mike gave me an idea today because I can't justify or I can't prove the right amount of monthly income because mm-hmm. they want like two and a half or three times the month per month in the income. And he said, why don't you talk to them and see if they'll accept you paying six months in advance so they know you're going to pay the bill. I said, I will take check that out. Yeah. See what they have to say. Maybe yeah. yes, maybe no. I don't know. Well, it's worth a shot. Mm-hmm. Or it's like to say is no. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they'll probably have to ask a whole bunch of people, but whatever. Yeah, that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So that's really the what other than I was I came to see Mike the first Tuesday of the year. And... I was going to tell him that I was done. I had absolutely no focus, and I wasn't doing anything. And I don't know what happened that morning, but the entire mentality changed. And it's been stayed that way. He refocused you. He didn't. It's something God did, obviously, because it was during my Bible study. Mm. So I have got a listing this morning. There you go. From a letter I wrote in December. You plant planting those little seeds, and they're starting to sprout. Yeah, See that? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. So this new listing is in Newport Ritchie. Yeah, in Oak Ridge. It's my friend's neighbor's house. Well, where he lived, he was a lifetime resident, but he didn't own it. And so, the owner. I wrote the owner. And Met them today. Awesome. Should be getting the documents back anytime now. Well, that's good. Then you have some work work to do. Then the work begins. Well, yes, I have to go tomorrow, and there's, they're dated for Monday because I don't want to. Um, I have to have to have time to get all the information out from right. the house because I've never been in it. I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Only the yard. Right, we have to clean up stuff and get rid of things. And That's what they're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's going to hire someone to did not realize that this property goes like this. Mm. This part's water. This is all was all pasture. And he's going to have someone come in and clean that so that you can see that you actually have land. Oh so wow! Right now I thought it was mostly water, and he said no, it's about two thirds and a third. Wow. Yeah. So I was real surprised. A lot more upland than he thought. That's good. Mm-hmm. 
They could put like a someone could put like a shed or a barn or something back there. Or... Oh, there's lots of room. Yeah. There's about 150 feet. Wow. From the edge of the lake that goes back. It's wow. Really shocked me. So I'm anxious to see it that way. Good. When they get it all, they're gonna be here till Tuesday, clean out, get rid of stuff, and that's what they're gonna be doing. How long are they here for? Till Tuesday. So they're going to have to work. Oh, so they're going to, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. They're going to try and have an estate sale, which they'll probably need assistance with. Whatever. We'll work on that. Yeah. Cross all those bridges when you get to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what have you been doing for fun? Moving my grandson. Moving your grandson? (laughs) Yeah. Where are you moving him to? He moved over to Wesley Chapel. He got yeah. a new job at USAA. Okay. And he's, uh, so he and his girlfriend moved over there. To a nice brand new unit. And that's what you're doing for fun? Yeah, pretty much. I <laughs> play with a dog. That's what I do for fun. Well, that's fun. That's more fun than moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's fun. Where do you guys go? Wherever we're head, wherever I head with her, and then we find a park or we find some place to walk and play. Yeah. There aren't too many places she's allowed to play, though. So. Oh, really? Which I was told when I got her that not to take her to dog parks. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Aggressive? She's not, no. No? She's so mild that other dogs would totally be. Oh, really? Yeah. And so she's, she's just a docile little thing, and... They and plus all the stuff that she could pick up in her fur because she's mm. got a ton of fur. Thick, heavy fur. Mm-hmm. I thought my dog, because he like at home, he's so chill and just um, you know he's pretty well trained and he. Uh, I thought that he would be more submissive around other dogs, but he gets like he gets a little temper on him and he gets a little like territorial sometimes. And then it's weird because then he'll get like around like, like a little dog or something, and then he's like wanting to play or. Oh yeah, the little yeah. dogs are fun for him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's weird with other dogs. I don't. I haven't figured him out yet. Well, she is too some, but you know. He gets like when um, Mike's dogs were around, he would get like they would come in the house, and he at first would be like, "Why are." other dogs in my house but then mike's dogs when they come in they just like we live here we're just gonna start chewing on this and do whatever we want (laughs) they just kind of take over and and then he's like then he just finally is like i guess there's nothing i can do about it i might as well have fun with them and then he gets along and everything's fine Mm -hmm. And it's just funny watching him because he like he'll he'll you can see his like lip curl up and he's like oh why is that dog sniffing at that bone i haven't chewed on in six months you know, and then all of a sudden now Dixie's chewing on a bone and he's like, oh, I want to chew on a bone too now. Mm-hmm. Well, you've had that thing forever. Mm-hmm. It's like kids. Yeah, kids are that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Played oh, with you have a toy? Uh, someone's playing with my toy? Mm-hmm. I want to play with my toy. You haven't touched that thing in a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. They're just like kids. Maybe people are just in general like that. I feel like uh, I feel like that happens with a lot of stuff. I guess you know. Yes. People start not; they take for granted what they have. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. A lot of people do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And then when it's taken from them, they're like, "Oh, you can have all the stuff I have. It's too much." Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting that way. I used I collect everything. Like I feel like my garage is just tons of stuff that i've collected over years and years and every time i look at some things i'm like i might need that someday i you know okay my dad (laughs) yeah exactly exactly and so my dad there's hope for me because my dad was that way growing up you know he's still has tons of stuff but within the last probably five years or so he's just like eh, i'm gonna get rid of all this stuff and i'm Mm -hmm. thinking oh wow what is going on that's weird my dad had a three stall garage and it had a it was full it was full length above like an attic, only you could make a nice apartment above there, but instead it was full 
of stuff. Yeah. Boards, whatever, you know. We always teased him about it. You know, you could make a nice place to live up there if you didn't store all this junk. Yep. <laughs> I have a three-car garage, and I have no room for a car. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> I have a golf cart in there, though, so there's something that I can drive in and out of the garage. But Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. There sounds, is a, sounds like my son's garage. I feel like every now and then, like probably once a year, I'll take everything out of the garage, and I'll get it all cleaned up, straightened out, where you can, you know, and then my wife will park the car in there, and then all of a sudden someone will put their bike in the middle of the thing so she can't pull in, and then she leaves it in the, and then more stuff starts collecting, and the car never goes back in the garage, and then it fills back up with a bunch of stuff everywhere, and then, you know, repeat, rinse and repeat every year, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, and it aggravates me. My wife, she'll, she'll like, she's got like lamps and kind of stuff from the house that she, wanting to like sell or get rid of so she just sticks it in the middle of the garage and it sits there for six or eight months and i go what are you doing with this like it's still sitting here <laughs> yeah she's I'm like waiting whatever for the sale. and she <laughs> tells me whatever you got junk laying all around my junk so don't act like you know well, i'm the, the problem <laughs> yeah. yeah my junk's in the way because yours is all yeah. around me too i can barely get to my junk because of her junk mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just human nature. Uh, yeah, it is. Yep. That was uh, not our garage. No, you kept it spotless and clean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought growing up, because I would get frustrated with my dad doing, like, he'll, he'll do a project, and then, like, he'll leave, like, a little piece that's not done. Mm. And I would be like, God, I don't, I don't know why he just doesn't finish that. I know. You know? And I do the same thing. Of I course, thought for that's sure. what you learned. I know, I know, yeah. I learned that everything got done and put away. Yeah. That's, that's, mm -hmm. So we're like, right now I'm getting a floor put in my small bedroom because I had already bought the stuff before I sold it. And it's a friend doing it, and he's doing a beautiful job, but it's taking time, and it's driving me crazy because my house is a disaster with all the stuff that was in there. Well, whatever. So yeah. I have an appraiser coming. Tomorrow at 8.30. Mm. He can just look by it all. I don't care. Yeah. They're kind of used to that. Like most appraisers, by the time they get there, you know, they're doing whatever touch-ups and things that they're supposed to do. And, you know, people are packing up and leaving. They got boxes everywhere because they're f fixing to leave. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty common. Mm -hmm. Not a big deal. Oh, I'm not concerned. Yeah. You, didn't, you, know, he'll just you don't look concerned. <laughs> I, I don't get too concerned about any of that stuff. <laughs> no, that's somebody else's job, not mine. Good. It's good to not stress over stuff like that. Never. Yeah. There's a lot of people that would. Oh, I know. I know. This can't. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's not me. Yeah. So how long have you uh, had your license now? Six years, June. Six years. Where were, you, where, were you, where were you at before? I first went to Keller Williams. I was only there eight months. Okay. Not quite eight months. Then I went to Berkshire Hathaway. That's right. Berkshire. Down here. What, uh, what about this place did you like? Why, like? What made you decide to come here? Was there anything specific? Uh, or just collectively? Diane Hudson. Oh, really? Okay. She just she just said that it was a comfortable place to be and that if you needed anything or I needed any help or whatever, you guys were always here. Yeah. And I, okay. And then you came in, met with us. Mm -hmm. Met with Mike only then. Yeah. Yep. He's a, he's a spark, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> yes. It, I guess that's a... The way to put it, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. His brain goes so many directions and... And yet he doesn't get lost in it. No, he's completely listening to three or four conversations and understands and knows what's going on in all of them. Plus he's doing tech stuff in the middle of it and checking his phone yeah, at I, the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he will have a conversation on Monday. And I, I, he's excited that I've got this listing, and that's a, that's good. And I just told him that I probably will get 
the villa from hell next time uh, again and he started laughing and I said well I think this time they have it right why they're going to do it but I said we'll see and I said uh, and then there's another one that I probably will get in April another vi- uh, not a villa but a condo and then I have three buyers I'm working with that's all I can handle I can't do it anymore because <laughs> I focus on something and I want to finish it right so that's enough yeah real estate's a tricky game because how long everything takes yeah so if you get this one started and then this one pops in and then this one pops in and i'm like no no this one has to get one of them has to get done i I can't i'm not good at multitasking on multiple things so well, that's probably where you refer stuff. Like if something comes up and they have to sell or have to buy right away and it's too much to handle, then say, hey, I'll help you. And go, Diane or somebody, you know, you, you deal with that and we'll split it. Could. Yeah. I'm going to meet with my 18-month-old buyer-sellers, sellers, buyers first on Saturday. And kind of push the issue a little bit yeah we're either gonna you've looked at over 200 houses it's time to just either do it or don't do it yeah but keeping look you're just driving yourselves crazy Mm. where are they are they looking around here you're showing them all these houses i'm not showing them all i showed them probably 20 20 maybe 20 25 the first six months and then now they just keep getting every day. They get a thing from the MLS that mm-hmm. says what's new or price change or whatever. And they always go in and look. So I know they've seen all these houses. But they're not doing anything with it. Well, right. do you really want the stress of seeing these houses every day? Or do you just want to make a decision and go with it? Some people are just shoppers, not buyers. Well, he wants out because he hates the traffic. They're mm-hmm. in Land O'Lakes, and they're right off 54. And he wants to be far north. He would go as far north as in Inverness, you know, up that way. Yeah. He, he just, that would be fine with him. She's not, doesn't want to go that far. I think San Antonio would be a good area for them. I think it would be a good compromise. Yeah. And there's some nice stuff going on out there, so. Oh, yeah, there's, um. There's some new neighborhoods going in. What are they looking for? Uh, three, two. No less than a third acre. Uh, so they want a little bit of property. No HOA. Oh, I don't think they care about that so much. No. It's just that it's they want space. He wants the space. She wants a neighborhood. So if they can come to a... And I've sent them probably 40 houses with that criteria. It's worked out. So we'll have a little conversation on Saturday. There you go. Whatever. Well, good deal. Mm-hmm. So business is working, just taking time. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's little seeds. You gotta plant all these little seeds, and then next thing you know, you got a field full of grass and trees popping up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's where you have, you know you stuff comes up and you don't want to handle it, you can't deal with it. It's too much. Oh, yeah. I There's, can pass it off. Then you just pass it off, and you still make the money. Mm-hmm. You make some of it, at least. You know, it's better than nothing. So. So right now, it's okay. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. What do you got planned? Anything coming up in the future mm-hmm. besides moving? to Phoenix. You're heading to Phoenix? Where at? Or uh, I know where Phoenix is, but, like, what part, like, area? Uh, let's see. My, my cousin. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lives in Tempe. Okay. My student, former student, lives in Phoenix. That's his address. And I'm going out to meet his new wife before he moves to England with her and uh, see my cousin, for I've never been out there to see her. Wow. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of family out there. Tempe, Glendale, Prescott, um... Yeah, people all over. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's the only family I have out there is her and her son, and the son's family. But uh, you know, she's always been asking. She comes back to Pennsylvania when we have a cousin's thing and you know, whatever. And I, 
nobody ever comes to see me. <laughs> when I texted her and said, are you going to be available this, these two weeks? And she, you could have heard the phone blow up. Wow. She was so excited. Oh, that's so awesome. Excited, so. When do you go? Leaving probably the last Wednesday in April. I don't know what that day is. If Tuesday so or Wednesday. still, anyway, it's three months It's going to be warm. Yeah, it'll be warm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's... Uh, I have a stop in Arlington, Texas. I was talking with Mike about it today, and he told me how to go. Mm. And then um, I want to go to San Antonio and see the Alamo. It's the only thing in Texas I care to see. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else is there, but that's the one thing I want to see. Uh. And then go on, and then on my way back, go into North Car- or into Colorado to the Spanish Peaks mm. and see a friend that lives there before he passes, because he's going to be 90. And uh, then drive back wow that's a long drive 2400 miles yeah i uh i went visited my uncle i ended up getting an elk tag in arizona which is pretty hard to do apparently and my first time putting in i got drawn and my uncle's like oh my gosh i can't believe he's like i've been putting in for that zone for years and i don't get drawn so he's like you have to come out here (laughs) that's a special deal i'm like okay so um We flew out there, and I figured if I shoot something, I'll just rent a car and drive it back, which was turned out to be a little more difficult than um, like people don't. I guess the they don't like for you to take the car and then leave and not return it back to the same place. Exactly. So, and then we needed a van, so it was kind of a hassle, but we figured it out, and I did end up getting an elk, and then um, yeah, we drove straight through the whole way back, never stopped. It was. Uh, I remember going into Texas, and it was thirty hours. It was still daylight. The sun was just starting to kind of starting to go down, and then uh, I'm like, "Geez, it's eleven o'clock in the morning. Sun's bright. We're still in Texas. <laughs> we drove all night long. I know. Never got out of Texas. Ugh. That was a long. That was a big state. It is. It was a fun though. It was a fun ride. We, I don't know. We goofed around, did a bunch of stupid crap. Didn't get in any trouble, so that's all that matters. Yeah, <laughs> you enjoyed the trip and didn't get to have any trouble. That's a good thing. Do you have anyone going with you? The dog. So you, just the two of you, huh? Wow. Well, be careful out there driving around, and I don't know. That's a long way to go out by yourself. Well, I go to Pennsylvania by myself. That's true. Yeah. That's a I guess if you're hours. used to it, you know. That's nineteen hours. Nineteen yeah. twenty. All right. You know, so we just pay attention. Yeah. But that's why I have OnStar too. Yeah. That is a personal thing that I do for me because I don't drive without it. Yeah. My uncle out there, he owns a dirt company. He sells dirt in the desert, and uh, he does yeah, well, really because well. I don't have dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in Phoenix, so he sells. It's funny because like they'll be doing construction or doing a bridge or something. And they need to get rid of all this. They're digging, getting rid of all this dirt, and he'll charge them to move it and put it on his lot. And then someone else will be like, oh, we need a bunch of dirt. And he's like, I'll charge it to have the dirt that he just charged somebody else to get rid of, you know? Mm-hmm. So he does well, and um, he does not fly. And he'll come out and visit, you know, every so often. He, he travels all over the place all the time and only drives. Mm-hmm. And he, I don't know how he does it. I fly if I have to, but if I'm taking her, I can't. Yeah. I won't fly her ever. No. She's too big to be in this in the carrier under the seat. I would never put her down below. Ever. Yeah. So it's drive or no go. Yeah. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> but I love driving. Yeah. I do too. My wife hates it. She's horrible at driving too. She's not a good driver. And every time we go anywhere, she falls asleep within the first, like, ten minutes. Oh, that's my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> I, we took a trip several years ago, but he said, Grandma, I'm going to stay awake. I'm going to see all this stuff. I want to see this, and I want to see this. And I said, okay. And all of a sudden, I look over, and he's quiet, and he's like, he's sound asleep. Yep. He wanted to see El Chipo. Have you ever seen that going north? It's, it's just a little village of itself. It's called El Chipo. Where's that at? 
I want to say North Carolina. Oh, okay. Somewhere in there. We were on 95, so it was somewhere on 95 because we were going to the Outer Banks. And I didn't have the heart to wake him, so we got by, and he said, I haven't seen a sign for El Chifo. I said, it's because it was back there about three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you wake him? Uh, you were sleeping. That's funny. <laughs> he can't stay awake in the car. He's just like his mother. She can't either. So. Uh, that's that's all for this year that's all you got all right well good i got some business and i got some travel and that's good there you go Mm -hmm. keep at it oh yeah both well let everyone know how they can get a hold of you if they want to if you know someone wants to sell their house or wants to buy a house wants to get you get you all busy call my phone What's the number? 727-735-2648. All right. my phone. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we'll wrap it up. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Another time. Another time. Okay. Take care. You too. It's been real, and we kept it simple. Who's next?